Hey guys, welcome to the next tutorial of ethical hacking and penetration testing via Kali Linux. So in this tutorial, we will be taking a look at social engineering attacks through Kali Linux. So the first part would be many newbie hackers focus upon the technical aspects of hacking and fail to give enough attention to social engineering attacks. In fact, I would say that you should only try technical hacks if you, you have attempted the social engineering attacks and they have failed. Because why bother spending hours and days trying to hack into a password if someone is willingly uh, or simply uh, ready to give it out to you. So social engineering is the act of getting people to give you information I told you before and that trust may be gained by posing as someone in the authority, colleague or just someone who needs your help. And Cal Linux has a tool inbuilt to assist and automate social engineering attacks called as SET or the Social Engineering Toolkit. SET was developed by David Kennedy and it simplifies a number of social engineering attacks such as phishing, spear phishing, malicious USBs and many more. Furthermore, it has been integrated with the Metasploit so that we can use Metasploit exploits and payloads in our social engineering attacks. So the, to start with, we would be first going ahead and clicking our terminal over here and we will type SE toolkit. You can either do and hit enter and you can either do this or you can go ahead and select application Cal Linux and over here you will find over here somewhere I don't know where exactly exploitation tools social engineering and SE toolkit perfect it's both are the same so it doesn't matter exactly so once you go ahead and start you will see the social engineering over here the first so we would be using the first point over here so I'll just click one and enter so as you can see we have a total of 10 different types of attack under social engineering and inside that also we have multiple attacks so the first one we will be checking are the spear phishing attack so I'll just go ahead and select one and I'll hit enter and as you can see that I have three different attacks inside that that is performing a mass email attack and performing a file format payload and creating a social engineering attack if you're trying to perform mass email attack make sure that you already have gathered information by using the harvester I believe I showed you previously about the harvester I may check if I have taught you that yep and by doing this you will gather information about the harvester as of now I have stopped it because my net is a bit down so uh, in this tutorial we will be looking at creating a spear phishing attack and for, uh, for those of you who are not familiar with this technology a spear phishing attack is an email attack with a broad uh, net in an attempt to try to pick up a few random victims. A spear phishing attack is similar except that when it targets one or few individuals, it will go and target all of them. In other words, it's a targeted social en engineering attack and hence it is called as spear phishing because it's targeted. Now let's go ahead and select the second one that's file format payload and I'll show you how we can go ahead and do that. So I'll just go ahead and type 2 and hit enter. As you can see we have different types of viruses or different types of trojans over here that has already been included. If you want you can go ahead and set up some custom one uh, but you need to go ahead and select the previous one so that you can go ahead and create a template for that first. So uh, what we will be setting over here would be the Microsoft Word RTF uh, P fragment stack buffer overflow. So this will create a Word document that will overflow a buffer and enable to put us a listener of rootkit on the victim's machine. So we'll just uh, press Phi and I'll hit enter. So what this would do is that the default is the PDF with the embedded exe and we're not going to use the PDF because normally Google is Google scans all the PDF that's why. So we'll be using the Microsoft Word RTFP fragment. So just hit 5 and enter. And here we have different types of payloads that we want to use. Note that we have decided what type of file we want to use in our attack. Our next step is to decide what type of listener or rootkit or payload that we want to use. We want to leave, uh, we would be leaving this on the listener victim's machine so that we can listen to it later. This may look familiar to you if you have used Metasploit or Metasploit payloads. So let's be ambitious and try to give, get the victim's uh, Metasploit meter interpreter on the victim's machine. If we are successful, we will completely own that system. So I'll just go ahead and minimize this and uh, I'll also open my Windows 7 over here side by side. So 
I'll just go ahead and log in into that. So I'll just go ahead and open my Cal Linux right now. So if you want to trick the victim into opening this file, you should name it something that uh, will uh, sound enhancing or enticing or familiar to the victim. So uh, let's go ahead and start. Let's use uh, the <coughs> Windows Vitapita or let's see. Uh, I will go ahead and use the reverse TCP shell to go ahead and send back the attacker so that you will get a command prompt. So I'll just go ahead and type 1 and I'll hit enter. Let's check. Okay, perfect. And we need to go ahead and set the IP address for the listener. So we would be using my IP address. I'll type if config. And this would be my IP address that is 192.168.236.130. I'll just copy and I'll paste it over here. And I'll hit enter. Now we need to go ahead and use a port to connect back to. Normally we use 443 because that's a default one. If you want you can supply your own. So I would be supplying my own. So I'll just use let's say 2960. And I'll hit enter. So it will go ahead and create a file format uh, for us over here. I'll close this one. Just we need to wait till it's created. So it is saved in root period SCT template.pdf. That's the name. And uh, you can go ahead and use the file format creator in SCT to create attachments. So we could, um, we need to go ahead and keep the file or we can go ahead and rename the file. So I'll just go ahead and rename the file. Let's say we'll rename the file to salary slip. I'll just go ahead and rename it to salary slip. So if I send this to the person, he will surely go ahead and click because let's assume that the person is working over here and just for the sake of it uh, and uh, I'll just go ahead and hit enter. So what do you want to do? We want to email the attack or we want to return. So I'll just go ahead and since I am not going to email it to anyone right now, but if you want, you can go ahead and email it to the attacker. Right now I won't be because I, am, I don't have the email ID, any uh, fake email IDs. So I'll just go ahead and end it right now and I'll hit enter and I'll just go ahead and see where it was. It was in the root. So I'll just open and file system on root. Let's check where is the root. And as you see, you cannot see anything with the name. I'll just go and delete these things. You cannot see anything with the name of period SET over here, which it's shown over here. The reason being that we uh, P period SET means a period in the start means it's hidden so we need to go and uh, show hidden files perfect we have period sct over here and then we have the cell to sleep option so i'll just go ahead and copy it over from here and this is our virus so make sure that you don't infect your own computer so i'll just go ahead and start it on my windows 7 version so i'll just copy it so if i'm able to paste it over here Okay, so Windows 8 has already detected it, so I'll go ahead and try to disable it just for the time being. And perfect. Now I'll just try to paste it over here. Perfect. And I'll go ahead and cut. I'll paste it over here. Perfect. And I don't need this file anymore. And I will go ahead and enable this again. I don't want any viruses on my computer. I'll save it. Perfect. Turn on. I'll just minimize it till then. Perfect. So now, which file is this? Let me check. Let's say it's a PDF file. Okay, let me check which file it is exactly. Okay, I did not name it PDF, so I'll just go and rename it as period pdf perfect and i believe i don't have the adobe reader installed so what would happen is that in case i had adobe reader installed over here i could have easily go gone ahead and run this file and once i went ahead and ran this file i would straight away go ahead and get a connection back over here and i would be able to run it 
so this is how we can go ahead and gather information if you don't if you're not yet understood what exactly it is that uh, we can go ahead and we want to trick the victim into opening this file we should name it something that will sound familiar to the victim and uh, now this will depend depending upon the victim and so since i told you that i am ex um, that i named the salary slip uh, so we will be impersonating the boss of our employee and uh, we will what we will be doing is that we will no normally go ahead and send this through email because and uh, the person who is over there normally it is sent by email and not through whatsapp or uh, facebook or something so sct then will go ahead and create this file and i'll name it something as uh, dear xyz please find the attached salary slip for your incoming for your last month and i'll name it something like that of course your email will differ depending upon whom you're trying to send it but try to make it sound enticing and legitimate or they are not likely to open the attached malicious file and our attack will fail so this is just an example as to how we can go ahead and do that and that would be it for this tutorial and in the later tutorial i'll be teaching you how we can go ahead and actually once the person runs this file how we can actually go ahead and gather much detailed information about that so that would be it for this tutorial let's take a look at next tutorial